Hello and welcome to Artisan Upholstery Studio. This is part one of a two-part video on how to reupholster a Parsons dining chair. So today this is part one and we're going to prep your Parsons dining chair for reupholstery. So we're going to touch up the wood a little bit on the legs. It's got some nicks and scratches and it's best to deal with it before you start to put any fabric on. So the legs on these chairs aren't actually that bad but they do have some little nicks and scratches that I want to touch up because uh, if you're putting new fabric on them you may as well touch up the wood make them look brand new. So on a chair like this where there are just small scratches on the legs um, I actually ran out of acetone and I've been using nail polish remover it works like a charm just put a little bit on a cotton ball and rub it all over the legs and it'll just clean them up nicely and get them prepped and ready for a little bit of stain over top. After that a light sanding with uh, some steel wool Again, not enough to take the old finish off. You're just dulling the surface a little bit. Next, you're going to take your stain and just rub it on over the entire leg because the color may change slightly depending on what color you're using. I use this brand, Salmon. So I'm rubbing off all of the excess and uh, where it was mostly scratched, you, you can um, use your sponge and just uh, tap it lightly along there to uh, apply more coverage to where it was scratched up. All right, so I barely gave that any time to dry. Um, I've just basically gone and washed my hands and I'm going to spray varnish it. Uh, so I've got this clear lacquer, Watco. Uh, I really like it. It dries almost immediately. And unless you're the type who enjoys that special lightheadedness that comes with working in a closed environment with chemicals. Uh, you're going to want to do this outside or use a mask to protect yourself. Okay, so I just took that outside and did it out there. It's a beautiful day, so why not? It's better than smelling up your house. Uh, so this is dried instantly and we're ready to start going. There's no stain rubbing off. Works really well. That's my five minute trick on how to retouch your legs. All right, so I don't know what your chair looks like, but this one is made of little foam chips that have been laminated together to make sort of a block of foam that's going on here. And it's, it's okay. There's also springs in here, which makes this chair a little bit more comfortable than one that's just got webbing on it. So I'm not going to bother replacing the foam on this. I think it's fine. But I am going to add a layer of bonded polyester over this because it's nice to pat up the sides. And it's also nice to just give it a, a puffy layer of padding over top of this kind of cheap cheesy foam. So with your measuring tape, you're going to measure your side measurement and you're going at the widest part of the chair, which is at the front. Measure underneath the frame on both sides. Give yourself a little bit extra. Mine is going to be cut 30 inches. And then you want to tuck it in through here and around the front underneath and that's 28 inches. All right, so laying this uh, centered on your chair, making sure that you have enough to pull under and around the sides. Looks good. So you're going to start by securing this at the front, underneath the frame, down here. I'm going to tuck it underneath the back and then secure it at the sides, pulling it as hard as you can. Beautiful. All right, so now we're going to make some cuts back here. So I'm going to mark it with a Sharpie marker because that uh, will give you a clear idea of how that's done. So I've got a post back here that needs to be cut around. It's the leg and it attaches to the back and 
you need to cut around that leg to be able to fit this part through the back and this part around the side. So all I'm going to do is mark that post on either side. So you've got two dots. That's both sides of the post. So then what I'm going to do is put a little V there and it's about an inch away from those dots and then straight in from this edge. You've got a 90 degree corner toward the center of that post and around it. Now you're just going to cut that. Shove that underneath. Pull it out the back. So now that that's through, it can be stapled in the middle here as well. Right, so now that we have four, all four sides stapled in the middle, we're going to put the rest of the staples in. So to do that, we're going to pull it to the side and down. So on a 45 degree angle, kind of shooting down at the ground there, like that. You want a lot of tension in here, and you're going to staple it down by the leg. And then the same on the other side. Then you're going to do the sides, same thing, pulling it to get lots of tension in here. You can just put all the staples in the back. Good. All right, so now that we have it mostly secured on there, we can fill it all up with staples now. You should only need a couple of staples in between those original three staples. So you're pulling it with one hand and stapling it with the other. Let's work at the back first, pull it straight back and tack it around to the back side. Make a cut from the outside, outside of this post to the inside of this corner up here. So that's the post, the leg. We're going down here to up there on a 45 degree angle. Trim it down, wrap that around. Trim that off. So now we have these corners to deal with. I'm going to wrap the side around to the front like this. Pull it down so it's nice and tight on this corner and staple it on the front edge of the chair, making sure that you're not stapling anywhere where you're going to see it. And you can 
fold that over and anything that's in here that's going to be in your way can be trimmed away. Uh, as a general rule, you can use your finger as a guide. So as long as you have a finger width here and a finger width here, you can cut all the rest out. Good. So now we can go from the outside corner of this leg to the inside corner up here. Trim it down both sides. Tuck it under. It's stable. So all this extra stuff around here can all be trimmed down. So now that we have our seat all padded up, it's time to move on to the back. All right, we're gonna measure that once again. This is the widest part of the chair on this chair, so that's the part I'm gonna measure. I'm getting 24 by 30. on there evenly. Tuck it down there for now. Okay. And you're going to pull it over the top and staple it once in the middle. Pull it around the sides and staple it on the back. So once you have those three sides secured, we're going to make our cuts. Same idea with the Sharpie marker. Find that post with your fingers. Mark either side of it. Make your V. And those are your cuts. This time we can't secure it at the back because then we wouldn't be able to fit our fabric through. So we're just going to let the back hold it in place and then we're going to put all the rest of our staples in. So starting at the top, you're going to pull it to the side. That's very important. And down. Just one staple. Same on the other side. Pull it to the side, to the side. And down. Nice and straight across here. Right. So now you can pull it over. Put the rest of your staples in. Now this can all be trimmed out. You only need it to fold over a little bit. And we'll make a nice, nice tight fold right here. And when I'm putting this staple in, I'm pulling it down. I'm pulling that body polyester down.
then when I'm putting this staple in, I'm pulling it up. Again, I'm pulling it down from this center staple, and I'm pulling it up from the center staple. And that's important because if you don't do that, then you'll get little lumps in here. And that's what makes it look very not professional. Now in these corners, we're going to be making small pleats. And we want to have as little bonded polyester in here as possible because it does make a lump in the corner. So trim it out so that you don't have very much in the corner, but that it's fully padded. Wrap it around, put some staples in the corner. There we go. Perfect. Trim it all down. So there you have it. Our fully prepped chair with beautifully retouched legs. I'm ready to put some fabric on this, so I highly recommend you join me for part two in this video, Parsons Chair Tutorial.